Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing all of the books I read in January. So this is going to be actually a pretty short one because though I've read more than just five books, I'm only going to be discussing five books in this wrap up because the other three books that I read, I am doing another video for those. It's they're all romances. So that will be coming out. I think it, if everything goes according to plan, the 15th of February, you'll be seeing that. So the day after Valentine's Day. All of the books on my TBR were all like pretty solid. Um, they were all three or four stars. And also important to note is that I started using the call pile system created by Gia Book Roast. I will link her video down below because I think it's a really good way to figure out a rating. So I'm no longer doing 0.5 stars. Call pile, it stands for seven different categories, characters, atmosphere, writing, plot, <laughs> intrigue, logic, and enjoyment. So you put in a number one to 10 and then it tells you your average and that gives you the star rating. So I'm going to do these in order of my least favorite of the month to my favorite. So now for some stats, I read 3,632 pages across eight books in January and I listened to 71 hours of audiobooks. My average rating was 3.25. I read one contemporary, four fantasies, and three romances. I read six adult books and two YA books. I gave four four stars, three three stars, and one one star. And then for the format, I read two physical books, one ebook, three audiobooks, and I read two as a mix of audio and physical. So my three star was Across the Greengrass Fields by Sean and McGuire. This is the sixth book in the Wayward Children series and it is a very good entry point because you've never met this character before or anything like that and we've never been to this world before so it is definitely a very good entry point but I still personally recommend just reading them in publication order. To go through my call pile categories, for our characters I gave it a 6, atmosphere an 8, writing an 8, plot was 4, intrigue was 4, logic was 5 and enjoyment was 5. So that gave it a 5.71 out of 10 and that equals a 3 star. As I said, it is a book in the Wayward Children series, which is a series that follows children that go through magical doors. And in this one, we follow Reagan, who is intersex, and she tells her best friend this and her best friend reacts very badly and is quite horrible to her. And so she runs away and then she finds this door and it leads her to a place that is filled with like all kinds of like magical horses. Uh, so like unicorns and centaurs and all of those kind of things and it is like the perfect world for her. So I never had like a horse girl phase when I was growing up. Honestly, horses terrify me. <laughs> I feel like that's such a stereotype, like the weird horse girl, but it wasn't actually that weird or strange. I mean, obviously everything in the series is a little strange and whimsical, but it definitely wasn't as strange as I thought it was going to be when I was going into it. <laughs> it is split into parts, uh, four parts. I do wish that part four was longer than part and part three was maybe a little bit shorter because I feel like part four like that's like the climax of it and I thought it was very rushed whereas part three was just her kind of exploring this place and I thought that could have been shortened a little bit to give us a little more time with, it, with the climax. Something I've noticed in the series is I definitely prefer the darker kind of worlds to like Jack and Jill's world. Um, I find those a lot more interesting and than like these places which are like all happy. Uh, I definitely prefer to to like places like the one in book three, which is like a sugar land and like this horse land. I definitely prefer the darker kind of style. My character rating was six because I did think that Reagan, um, the, our main character, was really well, well developed and I did actually quite enjoy her character. Despite how short the book is, I thought we really got an insight into her, but I thought every other character kind of blended together. And I understand that you don't, you can't, do absolutely everything in such a short space of sub time but when these books are often so character focused I wish I was able to tell them apart a little more. <laughs> so yeah and atmosphere and writing were the top because I think Sean McGuire she always does a great job of making really atmospheric and whimsical stories. So now all of the other books I'm going to talk about are all four stars so first I'm going to talk about The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I know I finally read it I'm only like four years late. I think most people know what this story is about. It follows a girl called Star and one night she is in the car with her friend and they get pulled over by the cops and then her friend ends up getting shot. And it's just Star's story about trying to find the courage to speak out against the injustice. So my call pile ratings, I get an eight for characters. I did really enjoy all of the characters. Star is such a wonderful main character. Her family as well, I thought they were all really wonderful and well developed. Um, there was definitely a couple characters in there that I wanted to see more of and I wanted to know more of, um, but 
obviously we can't we can't have it all so atmosphere i gave a seven i think angie thomas did a very good job of creating like that really tense atmosphere and like you really felt what the characters were feeling you felt the anger you felt the tension and all of that writing i gave a seven i think the writing was perfectly solid but i did find myself noticing that there was a lot of dialogue and like like there would just be like nearly a whole page of just like dialogue and sometimes it would be pretty hard to follow you'd be like wait which person's talking <laughs> but that was my only real problem with the writing plot i gave it an age it's obviously a very important story and it's definitely a book that everyone should read i gave intrigue a seven i wasn't like super completely invested in it like i definitely I definitely did want to continue reading it which is why it is a seven and not like really low down but it wasn't something that I was like absolutely couldn't put it down. Logic I gave it an eight and enjoyment I gave it a seven. That gives an average of 7.43 which is a kind of mid four star. So next is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This was my first book of the year and I was absolutely blown away by it because it's such a unique story and it's definitely what I would recommend but if you're like new to adult fantasy maybe don't start with this like only kind of last year did I start to like actually really get into adult fantasy so yeah I definitely wouldn't recommend it being one of your first adult fantasies because it's very dense and it's a little confusing and it takes a while for you to kind of get your head around it but once you do it is so good. I don't even know. This is such a hard book to describe. So we follow three points of view and in this world I it's like a future earth and in this future there is these people with powers and there's also these seasons that happen and they're like absolutely like disastrous events like they basically nearly end civilization and they just constantly try to get better so that they can survive the next season and these magic people if they are kind of feared because people are like oh it's them doing it um but it's kind of we're unsure whether that's the truth or not and we're kind of discovering that as we go on so we follow three points of view in here so we follow a young girl who has just discovered that she has these powers we follow a woman who is at this kind of you're like university kind of teaching place and is learning how to use her abilities and then we are following a woman whose child has just died and she wants revenge on her husband who was killed and that point of view is actually shown in second person I didn't think I would like that but I found it actually way easier to get into than I thought I would so yeah I was quite shocked by that just to go to through call pile I gave characters an eight I love the characters in here I thought they were really complicated and I had a prediction about a character in here and it was right and I was so happy when I figured it out. Atmosphere I gave a seven. It definitely you know end of the world kind of stuff. <laughs> writing I gave a nine. I N.K. Jemisin's writing absolutely phenomenal. Like it was so beautifully written. Plot I gave a seven. As I said it is a bit confusing and it takes you a while to kind of get into it but kind of when you get there it's like really interesting. Intrigue I gave a 9 because I definitely it was definitely one that I was like what is happening I need to figure this out and I definitely do need to get to the second one but I don't think I'm gonna get have time until March to get to it. Logic 9 I do think that it's a very logical world and a lot of the stuff in here she kind of bases on science so while there is magic there's also a lot kind of around science as well so it makes it feel all the more real. For enjoyment I gave it an 8 so it's definitely a book I would recommend so that gives it an 8.14 overall and that is a pretty high four stars. Now the next book that I'm going to talk about is Ship of Destiny by Robin Hobb. 903 pages of oh my god <laughs> so much happened in here and I didn't actually even take any notes while reading this because I was just just fully invested I couldn't put it down. So this is the final book in the Live Ship Traders series. I've been participating in Elderling Along and so this is the sixth book in the Elderling series so the Fire Spirit Trilogy and then the Live Ship Traders series. In this series we follow a family of traders um, called the Vestrick family and also a 
pirate lieutenant and also some sea serpents and the Vestrids have a live ship which is this magical ship that when three generations of the same family die on its decks it quickens and becomes alive and Ephraim Vestrid is just about to die and so they so he dies on the decks becoming the last person needed before the ship quickens um and Althea Vestrid she has always grown up on the ship and she's loved this ship since she was a young girl and she fully expects to inherit it but then she discovers that everything is going to her sister Kefria and therefore the new captain of the Vivesha will be her husband Kyle. So Althea sets out to prove herself worthy of captaining this ship. Uh, we, then we also follow Kyle as he brings his son Wintro to try and learn, teach him how to be a sailor and then we also follow a bunch of the women of the family so Ronica, Kefria and the granddaughter Malta as they are navigating through Bangtown politics and so this is the finale and we finally see all of these plots that we've been following we see them finally connect in this story and it was absolutely incredible in this series there is definitely a trigger warning for sexual assault it's also just like a whole other stuff like in most of her books there's like kind of like there's torture and like abuse of st so definitely if you're going to pick up the Fire Seer trilogy or the Life Ship Trader, do definitely check out the trigger warnings. But yes, this one was another really high four star. It was pretty close to actually getting a five, but it just didn't quite get there. It gave characters a nine. I think, I think that Robin Hobb is absolutely incredible at writing characters. She writes characters that you hate and then she just so quickly changes your mind and you don't even realize that it's happening. And I think that is such an impressive thing to do. But I did definitely prefer reading about Fitz than I did about the characters in here. There's none in here that I was like really attached or invested in so that's kind of why I couldn't give characters a 10 even though she writes the characters so well there was none that I was like really in love with except for Amber and she was not a main character. I gave Atmosphere an 8 because I don't really like the whole sea atmosphere, the pirates, I don't really care about that. I mean, I think Robin Hobb does an incredible job of doing it, but it's not my preferred <laughs> world, I suppose. So definitely that's brought it down a little, but Robin Hobb is just so good <laughs> at writing anything. So writing nine, I think she's a phenomenal writer. I think she has like the perfect balance of kind of beautiful descriptions, but not too flowery. And then a good bit of action and thrown in there as well. I think she has just a really great writing style especially for fantasy. She doesn't over complicate things or she doesn't over describe things or she doesn't go really flowery but she's also not really bland and straight to the point so I think it's kind of a perfect balance for those people who like the kind of straightforward and also the people who like the more flowery because I think she's kind of just a perfect middle of the road. Plot I gave an eight. As I said this also kind of the whole pirate thing doesn't really 100% interest me but I was invested in this story there was point of view that I really liked in the first book or there's point of views that I really liked in the second book that I just didn't really care about reading in this one and that was because there's so many point of views and the chapters are really long I there was just certain point of views that I was far more interested in and I was just like I want to see this character and I think that's why I kind of have to bump that down a bit because there's just some that I was like I don't really care what you're doing I mean I still enjoyed all of the characters but there was definitely like certain point of views that I really wanted to get back to. Intrigue 8, this same as last time, there were some that I was far more interested in than the others but overall I was very invested and very interested in what was happening in the story and I did want to figure out how this all tied together and what, why was this happening. Logic 9, I think she explains herself very well and it all makes sense. I don't think there's many like plot holes and stuff she just thinks things out really well I think because there's things that you don't think are important and they are extremely important you find out later on and that's especially in the Fireseer trilogy there's so much stuff that you're like this means absolutely nothing and it turns out later on it means so much and you get you learn so much about just this world in this book and it like completely changes things that we thought were true in the Fireseer trilogy but it doesn't make the Fireseer trilogy seem like it's wrong it's just you learn the truths about things 
so it changes the world without making like the fire seer trilogy seem like one big plot hole and enjoyment i give it a nine it took me four days to read this 903 page book four days i was absolutely hooked so overall that gave it an 8.57 out of 10 which translates to a four star now the last book that i'm going to talk about and my best book of the month um, but it is still only a four star, is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy. And this was one point off being a five star. And I was kept trying to find where I should bring it up, but none of them felt like they should be up anymore. So it's just going to be an extremely high four star. So close to five. So this story follows a world where the bad guy has won and he has ruled for years and years and years and now there is kind of an uprising being planned and so we follow this guy called Kelsier who is a mistborn as he is trying to plan this rebellion and then he discovers this teen called Vin out on the streets and it discovers that she too is a mistborn which is basically where you can ingest all of the metals and have all of the powers that you get from those so in this world, the whole magic system revolves around metals. If you do have the power of Alamancy, you can usually only control one, but if you can control all of them, you are misborn, and that is very rare. I'm so intrigued about where this series is going because this is like a fairly clean ending. Like there's definitely plenty of questions left unanswered, but like it's a pretty clean ending and that makes me very nervous about where the series is gonna go. So I absolutely fell in love with the series. I I kind of thought I would. So many people love this series um, and I'm glad that I too have enjoyed this and it's actually pretty easy to get through. It's definitely a little slow to start off but it is very understandable. We're learning it as Vin learns it so it's a very clear way of getting across your magic system and your world because Vin is learning it along with us so it's definitely far more accessible than you might think looking at the size of it like it is pretty big <laughs> if you like put these two side by side like you wouldn't think that the one i'd be telling like people who haven't read a lot of fantasy would be this huge thick one <laughs> compared to this one but it is it's definitely a lot more accessible but this is also great so <laughs> so i gave characters a 10 i got so attached to these characters in such a short amount of time i actually didn't expect it but next thing i knew I was just absolutely hooked. The friendships and like kind of, not necessarily family. I, there was definitely a found family element in here that I really enjoyed and thought was absolutely adorable. There was this one guy in this story that I was just, I really liked him. And I was like, please, please don't betray. Please don't be a bad guy in the end because I didn't know who to trust. Like all of the characters was like, are you good? <sighs> because that is something that Vin has been taught her whole life. She's like, her brother told her never to trust anyone. And so you're constantly hearing that. And so it like gets into your head. You're like, I don't trust you. <laughs> and yeah, I just, I really love the characters. I loved all of the relationships between the characters. And I, I really liked Vin and Kelsier, our two main characters and our two main points of views. I was here, I gave a nine. It was pretty solid. I mean, it felt like a world that has been at war. You could feel the tension, you could feel, you felt scared for them. You Writing, I gave an eight. There's nothing fancy about this writing. I think it's very straightforward. And that is something that I actually like, but I know lots of people don't really like that so much. And plot, I gave a nine. I really like the whole kind of scheming thing. Like, I really enjoyed that. I'm getting to see how they're working out this and that. And like, just seeing okay, so this has happened, so what can we do? I really enjoyed actually getting to see it because I feel like we don't get that a lot. A lot of the time it's near like fade to black, I feel like in these kind of books, in a lot of books where they're like scheming, they're like trying to come up with a plan and you just like, it's like fade to black and then they're like set up and all ready to go. And you're like, I don't know what you're doing. And I really liked that we got kind of taken on the journey of trying to plot against this bad guy. Intrigue, I gave an 8. This is, again, this is one of the lowest points because I did find this start very slow. It did take me a while to get into the story, but once I got, I don't know, definitely before the halfway point, but like after the halfway point, I just did not want to put it down at all. And maybe like, 
I'll say like the first quarter was pretty slow then like the quarter to the half was like really was interesting and I was getting invested and then like the last half I did not want to put down at all. Logic I gave a nine I feel like you hear this quite often that he does have a very logical magic system and everything is explained very well and he doesn't leave gaps and I definitely agree with that. Another reason why the logic rack is so high is because we got to see their thought process behind their planning and why this would work and why this wouldn't work and I really enjoyed that and I hope more books do that. Tell me more books that like take you along with the planning process. Lastly enjoyment I gave it a nine and also one little last really weird thing that bugs me about this book is the font. I hate this. I hate this font. I hate it. <laughs> it's so ugly I like the margins are so small and they're yeah I, I don't like the spacing in there but I also understand why the spacing is like so squished together because like otherwise it'd be like a super super big book um but I don't like the font <laughs> like like this like this is so much better so much prettier so much more pleasing to my eyeballs and even okay this one's like pretty small but like so much better to look at I just I don't like the font <laughs> but that's just me being very strange Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, subscribe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!